Yuri Prohaska has taken the MMA world by storm. The Muay Thai kickboxer from the Czech Republic is coming off a huge win against Dominic Reyes. And in that fight, he displayed his unorthodox style on the feet, constant pressure, and granite chin, which led to an amazing finish. He is a must-watch whenever he fights. And with this performance, not only do many believe that he should be next for a shot at the title, but some are saying that he is the future of the light heavyweight division, which is a lot of hype for a man who has only fought twice in the UFC. So how good is Yuri Prohaska actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Yuri Prohaska. This is the first time I'm making a How Good Is video, and I want it to be a series that focuses on fighters who've created a lot of hype in just a few fights. And that's definitely what Yuri has done, especially in his most recent win against Dominic Reyes. But he's already had such a long career prior to signing with the UFC. So in this video, I want to focus on all of that to really understand if he's as good as everyone believes. But first, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video. But even the intro members get early access and video to the Keon Kamar podcast. And as always, the money goes to charity. We donated this month's earnings to the Ronald McDonald House charity in Toronto, which provides a home for seriously ill children and their families. So thank you to the Undisputed and intro members for all your support. And if you want to donate, all the info will be down below. Now let's get to it. Yuri began his MMA career on April 7th, 2012 at the age of 19. He started training in Muay Thai at the age of 16 and in 2011, he won a national Muay Thai championship. His first opponent in MMA was Stan Stanislav Futera. Despite getting taken down, Yuri got back up and dropped Stanislav with a left hand before finishing him off with ground and pound. The fight lasted 53 seconds. After this win, he fought Vladimir Iyas, and it took him 62 seconds to connect with knees before Vladimir went out. Two months later, Yuri fought Martin Vanis. After taking Martin down and battering him with ground and pound, the two got back up, but Yuri dropped him with a right hand before finishing him with more punches. Following this win, he fought Strahinja Denich. Although Strahinja tried to bring the fight down twice, he ended up on his back and eight shots. And although he reversed Yuri, he ended up getting caught in a triangle choke that forced a tap. A month later, he fought Boyan Velikovic. After getting taken down, Yuri ate big shots before the referee stepped in, handing him his first defeat. Yuri bounced back with a win before fighting Radovan Astochin. Radovan came out swinging and pressing forward, but all Yuri needed was a knee to knock him out cold. The fight lasted 26 seconds. A month later, he fought Abdul Karim Adilov. Abdul secured a couple of takedowns and on the second one, he locked up a rear naked choke that ended the fight. Yuri bounced back with a win before fighting for the inaugural Gladiator Fighting Championship light heavyweight belt. His opponent was Martin Solch. For most of the fight, the two were trading on the feet, and it was Yuri who was finding more success early due to his size and reach advantage. They also took each other down, but Yuri had more time on top, and I have to give credit to Martin for taking some hard shots and still firing back. And because of that, it was Yuri's first fight to go past the first round, which meant we not only got to see his stamina, but also his ability to take shots. Both men were exhausted, but it was Yuri who connected with a flying knee and punches that finished the fight, making him the gladiator fighting championship light heavyweight champion. Following this win, Yuri fought Viktor Bogutsky. Yuri found success early on the feet by pressing forward and moving awkwardly, which made it difficult to anticipate his shots. Eventually, he took down Viktor and locked up a rear naked choke, which forced a tap. Three months later, he put his light heavyweight championship on the line against Tomas Penz. Yuri's pressure was too much, which led to a flying knee and punches that finished the fight. Five months later, he fought Darko Stosic. Darko was able to secure a takedown early, and when the two got back up, he connected with a left hand that rocked Yuri. Yuri shot for a desperation takedown, and once he got denied, he followed up with punches that dropped Darko. This led to more shots on the ground before the ref stepped in. After this win, he fought Mikhail Moknatkin. It wasn't the most eventful fight, but for the most part, Yuri was pressing forward with strikes. He also denied most of Mikhail's takedowns. This was Yuri's first fight to not end in a finish. And after three rounds, the fight was ruled as a draw. Two months later, he fought Rokas Stambrakas. Yuri landed some nice punches and kicks. And although Rokas tried to bring the fight down and lock up submissions, these attempts were denied. Yuri was dominant everywhere the fight went. And before the start of round two, Rokas's corner threw in the towel. Following this victory, Yuri fought Mikhail Fijelka. Once again, Yuri controlled the action on the feet by pressing forward with kicks, punches, and knees. Mikhail got dropped three times in this round. It was a beatdown. And prior to the second, Mikhail's corner threw in the towel. Six months later, Yuri fought Evgeny Kondratov. Yuri looked good on the feet and also denied all of the takedown attempts. This led to a huge right hand that knocked Evgeny out. Prior to this victory, Yuri signed with Japanese MMA promotion, Ryzen, making him the first fighter from the Czech Republic to fight with them. His first opponent was Olympic gold medalist in judo, Satoshi Ishii. Yuri was making his debut at heavyweight in this fight, and this was a quarterfinal bout in the 2015 Ryzen World Grand Prix, and he put on a huge statement by dropping Satoshi with a head kick and punches before finishing him on the ground with knees to the head. He advanced to the semifinals two days later to fight Vadim Nemkov. This was a wild fight that saw both men open up with some hard shots 
before Vadim got dropped by a right hand. But he bought some time by securing a huge takedown before attempting a guillotine choke. But Yuri escaped and the two continued to trade on the feet. Vadim secured another takedown but had to defend a tight armbar. But Yuri survived and the action continued on the feet. Vadim attempted another takedown but this time he ended up on his back. He turned around and Yuri tried to lock up a rear naked choke. But Vadim was able to escape and once the two got back up, he secured another takedown. He attempted an armbar but Yuri got out and began throwing shots from above. And once again he got a hold of Vadim's back and attempted a rear naked choke. But Vadim escaped and the two got back up and traded big shots. He caught a kick from Yuri and secured a takedown before the end of the round. These 10 minutes were action packed and Vadim was exhausted from it and unable to continue to the second. This win led to Yuri fighting in the finals that same evening. His opponent was former Strikeforce light heavyweight champion, Mohamed King Mo Lawal. Although Yuri was looking good on the feet early on, King Mo found success by bringing the fight down and throwing ground and pound. And once the two got back up, Yuri rushed in and got caught by a right hand that knocked him out cold. Four months later, he fought Kazuyuki Fujita. And although he got taken down for a moment, Yuri was controlling most of the action on the feet. This led to punches that knocked Kazuyuki out. After this win, Yuri entered the Ryzen Openweight Grand Prix. In the first round, he fought Mark Tanios. Mark found success with the leg kicks. And one of them injured Yuri's knee early on in the fight. But Mark was unable to capitalize on it. Yuri was still able to do enough on the feet and on the ground to win by unanimous decision. But this knee injury meant that he had to pull out of the Openweight Grand Prix. So Yuri came back a year later and returned back down to light heavyweight. His opponent was William Roberto Alves. And despite the long layoff, Yuri looked amazing as he battered William on the feet before finishing him with a huge right hand. Three months later, Yuri fought Carl Albrechtson. Carl controlled most of the action in round one with takedowns and ground and pound. But near the end of the first, Yuri was able to get back up and connect with punches. Carl was unable to defend himself and this forced the ref to step in. At Ryzen 11, he fought Bruno Henry Capeloza. Bruno came out swinging with bombs. This led to a jab that rocked Yuri. But as Bruno continued to rush in, he got caught with punches and went down. Yuri continued to connect with punches and knees before finishing the fight with ground and pound. Two months later, he fought Jake Hyun. Yuri dominated on the feet for the entire fight. And this led to punches that forced the ref to step in. At Ryzen 14, he fought Brandon Halsey. Yuri got taken down early, ate punches, and had to defend a tight guillotine choke. But he escaped and Brandon was visibly tired. He ate some big shots from Yuri and also fell out of the ring and hurt his back which paused the timer. And Brandon used the ring to his advantage to stall the action whenever he was in trouble. Something Yuri did not like. And after getting taken down again, he continued to mock Brandon as he was eating punches. But this was a huge mistake as Yuri got caught in a rear naked choke that looked really tight. But he escaped and began throwing ground and pound which led to the finish. Yuri's next fight was for the inaugural Ryzen Light Heavyweight Championship. His opponent was the 2015 Ryzen Heavyweight World Grand Prix winner, Mohamed King Mo Lawal, making it their second meeting. Although King Mo found success with some leg kicks, he was unable to bring the fight down. This led to Yuri connecting on the feet, but he also made sure to pull back to avoid any counters. As the fight went on, King Mo was getting tired and Yuri began to let go more. And in round 3, Yuri's pace became too much. This led to punches that ended the fight, making Yuri the Ryzen Light Heavyweight Champion. At Ryzen 19, he fought Fabio Maldonado. Fabio had no answer for Yuri's pressure and striking. This led to him getting finished by punches early in round 1. Two months later, he fought CB Dalloway in a title fight. Although CB connected with some nice shots, all Yuri needed was a left hand to finish the fight. After this win, he signed with the UFC in January of 2020. So Yuri made his debut at UFC 251 against Volkan Ozdemir. The two started off by trading on the feet. And although Yuri got rocked a few times early on, he also connected with some nice shots as well. His fast pace and unorthodox style was too difficult for Volkan to keep up with. And in the second round, Yuri rocked him with a head kick. He followed up with punches that knocked Volkan out. After this win, he headlined his first UFC event. His opponent was Dominic Reyes. Once again, Yuri took control of the fight with his pace which saw him constantly press forward with punches, kicks, and knees. But Dominic landed some nice shots as well, especially with the left hand. He also secured a takedown, but Yuri powered his way back up. This led to more pressure on the feed and credit to Dominic for eating these shots and still returning with some of his own. But this pace from Yuri continued into round 2. And although Dominic was eating many shots, he connected with a left hand that rocked Yuri. Yuri shot for a desperation takedown and almost got caught in a guillotine choke. And when he escaped, he ate an upkick which knocked him out for a few seconds. But he recovered and threw some ground and pound before the two got back up. This led to elbows against the cage before he connected with a spinning back elbow that knocked Dominic out. This finish was beautiful. And the hype surrounding Yuri skyrocketed. There are talks of him becoming the future of the UFC light heavyweight division. That's how excited everyone is about Yuri. So after going 28-3-1 in a career that saw him become the gladiator fighting championship and rising light heavyweight champion, how good is Yuri Prohaska actually? Yes, he is definitely the real deal. To amass a record like he 
has at the age of 28 is incredible. And I understand that many of these wins aren't against big names, but the way he won these fights is why he's so impressive. Because out of 32 bouts, he's only gone to the judges twice, and six of them have gone past the first round. That's absolutely insane. What it says about Yuri is that he goes for the finish every time, especially the knockout. There are hardly any times where he looked for the easy win by fighting safe. He fights without any fear as he constantly presses forward, and he's able to do this with his strong chin and incredible stamina. Even when he does get rocked, he recovers very quickly. He fights at a pace that his opponent must fight at, and unless they're as tough as him, then it's going to be a rough night. But even if they are, they still face issues with his striking. His Muay Thai is very impressive as he throws an array of punches, kicks, knees, and elbows. And he throws them at angles that are hard to telegraph as he usually keeps his hands low. My favorite move from him is his flying knee, and his height and long reach really helps with all these attacks. And so does his awkward movement on the feet which includes a bunch of fainting and stance switches. Although he hardly finishes the fight on the ground, he's able to secure takedowns, throw big shots from above, and threaten with submissions. He also has some impressive takedown and submission defense. The amount of times he got locked into a tight submission and got out is wild. And even if he does get taken down, it's hard to hold him there. Basically, all these things amount to a fighter that everyone would enjoy to watch. And I feel like Yuri himself enjoys doing it because you can tell how much heart he has for martial arts. From inside the cage to outside of it, he wants to display the beautiful sport and make it palatable for everyone. He's the type of fighter you tell your friends who don't watch MMA about because you know that he will impress them. I mean, his resume speaks for itself. But whenever a fighter attains this much hype early on in their UFC career, there's bound to be talks of if they can become champion. And that's what's happening with Yuri right now. Even current light heavyweight champion Jan Bohovic is talking about a matchup with him. And this is all before his next title defense against Glover Teixeira. But the question is, will Yuri be able to live up to the expectations of becoming a UFC champion? Personally, I think he can, but there's also other things that top fighters can expose him on. First off, his defense definitely needs to improve. He reminds me of when Justin Gaethje entered the UFC. They don't mind taking hits in order to return some as well. And although that worked for Justin in his first UFC fight, it began to become a problem against the elite in the division. Now I'm not saying that Volkan Ozdemir and Dominic Reyes are not elite, but their momentum is not as high compared to fighters like Jan Bohovic, Glover Teixeira, and even Alexander Rakic. And let's say it is Jan that Yuri has to fight for the championship. He'd be going up against someone who proved in their last fight against middleweight champion Israel Adesanya that he is a very technical fighter. And although Yuri has a granite chin, I'm sure it wouldn't be a good idea to test that against Jan's Polish power. He has proven that he can be knocked out. And although he survived most of the adversity that he faced, it's a completely different story against the best fighters in the world. But even Yuri has pointed this out himself and was actually disappointed with his performance against Dominic Reyes due to the amount of times he got tagged. And that's a good sign because he can't allow those mistakes to happen when he reaches the top. But the upside against fighters like Jan and Glover is that they are much older than him. And I think it would be difficult for them at their age to handle the pace that a young man like Yuri fights at. That's why I would love to see a fight with Alexander Rakic as he is young as well. And he's also a very technical fighter. Regardless of who Yuri fights next, all I know is that everyone's eyes at 205 will be on him. In fact, everyone in the MMA world is waiting to see what he does next. And whether or not he wins or loses, there is no doubt that Yuri Prohaska will put on a show. My name is Keon and this is my take on Yuri Prohaska. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you on my next one.